This is a uh, week 12 lecture for Bible history and geography class. Uh, I decided that a pre-recorded lecture would work better this week due to some obligations I have at a conference and uh, realizing that there would be some overlap. So if you uh, would, would watch this as a, in, as a substitute for the live lecture and the Lord willing, we'll be back together uh, live uh, the week after this. Let me just say uh, again, that it was a joy and a privilege to be with you in person the last uh, couple of weeks and to meet uh, some of you uh, face to face and uh, put some faces with names. And uh, just what a privilege it was for me uh, to get to know you. And uh, I trust the Lord will give you a good rest of the of the semester. So as we get started on our lecture today, I want to uh, put up the map that I want us to look at and uh, we'll be start off with, with this. Take a look at this map for a minute. And what you'll notice is that this map is giving us a look at uh, first century uh, Palestine. Palestine is in the news quite a bit right now uh, because of the war that's taking place. But this is giving us, giving us a look at uh, first century uh, Palestine. And as you look at this, a map, what are some things that you that you notice? Well, as you look at the map, what you ought to see is that the map is actually giving us, uh, it, it's, it's telling us some of the major places, like I just circled Samaria, and Judea, and Perea, and Decapolis. It's giving us some of these, and I'm going to circle Galilee here, it's giving us these major, what we could call provinces or maybe regions in the land of, of Palestine. So the land as a whole, we could refer to as Palestine or Israel, but in that land, as it was in the New Testament period, it divided into these regions or into these provinces. As, usual, as, as normal, when we look at these uh, and we look at a map, what I'm going to give you is 10 things that I want you uh, to know uh, for this uh, for this map. Let me identify those those 10 things for us, and a lot of these would be the things that I just uh, circled. So the first thing that I want you to, to be aware of, and you would need to know this for your map project, as well as for the final exam, is I'm going to circle the word Judea here. So this would be number one, Judea. As you look at that word Judea, that ought to, um, you ought to think, for example, of the word Judah, which was one of the Old Testament, uh, one of the tribes, the 12 tribes of, of, of Israel. Uh, Judea definitely is related to the word Judah. Uh, Judah was taken into captivity. Judah was brought back from captivity. So Judea or Judea uh, comes from that name Judah, as does the name, for example, Jews is related to Judah or Judea. Uh, Jews became a term for Israelites, probably uh, because most of those who came back from captivity uh, were of the tribe of Judah. And so the term Jews just became used of those that were descendants of Judah or of Israel as a whole. So you're looking on the screen there, you can see that Judea is right, basically right in the middle. That's the heart of the land of, of Palestine. That's going to be your major region or province. It's going to be your most Jewish of all the regions or provinces in the land of, of Palestine in the first century. Um, let's go to a second region. I'm going to circle the word Samaria. Do you see Samaria there that I just circled? And let me put a, a number two by that. So Samaria. Uh, Samaria, this would be the location where uh, we might think of them as half-breeds. They were half-Jew and half-Gentile. Uh, this was a result of some things that happened toward the end of the Old Testament period, uh, where you have uh, the uh, Gentile people being brought in to settle in the area of Samaria. They end up mingling with the Jews. Their offspring comes to, re comes to be known as Samaritans. Uh, these uh, Samaritans, because they were half-breed Jews, 
uh, because of the way that they worshiped and they did not follow the temple rituals at Jerusalem. Uh, they were not liked by the Jewish people as a whole. In fact, the Jewish people tend to look down on the Samaritans, almost looking at them as no more than really than than than, than really a dog. So Samaria. Um, let's go to a third thing that you're going to want to know for your map project. And uh, this is number three, if you can see what I just circled there. Number three is Galilee. You can see that Galilee is a region uh, or a province in the land of Palestine. Uh, you could rightly assume that Galilee, the region, uh, is getting its name from the Sea of Galilee, or at least the names are related, which one uh, comes before the other, I would not know offhand, but you can tell that the names are related to each other and that the Ga area of Galilee and the Sea of Galilee share the same uh, name. Of course, Galilee, as we're going to see in a minute, is the place uh, where Jesus or Jesus grew up, and it's the place that became uh, the headquarters of his of his ministry. Let's go to a fourth area, and uh, let's talk about this, the Decapolis. If you can see uh, what I just uh, circled, Decapolis. Decapolis, can you uh, figure out what, what that means? Uh, deca. Uh, deca, think of decade. What is decade? Well, deca is 10. How about polis? Uh, metropolis. Okay, polis is a city. Uh, Decapolis would re refers to 10 cities, uh, 10 cities. This was a very Gentile area in the land of, of Palestine. Uh, this was the area you can see some of the cities even there uh, on the screen. But this would be the area, for example, if you remember the story uh, where the where Christ sent, allowed the demons to go into the herd of pigs. And you may have read that story and thought to yourself, well, um, why would Jewish people have pigs? Because they weren't allowed to, to eat pigs and, and so on. Well, uh, that story took place in a, uh, in a gen, in this Decapolis area, in this largely Gentile area. And so this was a, a, a largely, again, a largely Gentile area uh, composed of these 10 cities, Greco-Roman cities. But this was an area uh, that is that you do find Christ traveling in and to and through, and uh, we find this even in the pages of our of our new of our New Testament. Um, how about another? Uh, let's go to another place here as we're looking at at some of this. Uh, let's go to number five. Can you see Perea here? Perea. This is going to be number. Five on our on our on our map here, number five, Perea, uh, Perea. This is another region uh, that we find uh, in our New Testaments. It is not referred to as Perea so much as it is referred to as beyond Jordan. And uh, I may try to show this to you uh, before we end our lecture time here uh, today. So, but this uh, area, Perea, or beyond Jordan, as it occurs in our uh, in our New Testament, our King James Bibles, uh, was another area that was a part of a New Testament uh, Palestine. Uh, what else do we want to note here as we look at the different areas? Well, let's go up uh, to the top, and uh, let me probably need to change colors here, and let's go up to the very top, and let me circle. Phoenicia here. Can you see what I just circled there in red? Uh, that would be number six, uh, Phoenicia. Uh, Phoenicia is, as you can see, was uh, north of, uh, in the northern area of the land of, of Palestine. This also would be a more a Gentile area. Uh, you can see the name Tyre here. That would have been one of the major uh, cities. Uh, and so Phoenicia, uh, Phoenicia uh, would have been another area uh, in the Palestine of the first century uh, AD. Um, what else we, do we want to make sure that we mark uh, on our maps? Well, if we can move to uh, cities instead of uh, provinces, 
Uh, let me try to clear the screen there. And uh, let's go down into Judea. And uh, let me circle Bethlehem. Can you see Bethlehem there uh, that I just circled? So Bethlehem. Bethlehem would be number seven in terms of the items that I want you to know uh, for your map uh, project and for the final exam, Bethlehem. Um, you can see that Bethlehem is just below Jerusalem. Bethlehem is not very far from Jerusalem. Uh, Bethlehem was one of the places that supplied sheep for the sacrifices that would take place at Jerusalem. Um, isn't it uh, fascinating that uh, Bethlehem was the birthplace of the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world? And the Lamb of God was born in Bethlehem, and he would be sacrificed in Jerusalem as the as the substitute for for our for our sin. So I want you to know where where Bethlehem is. Number eight is going to take us up into the area of Galilee and I'm going to circle the word Nazareth. Can you see what I just circled there in red? Uh, number eight is uh, Nazareth. Uh, Nazareth of course is the place where Jesus grew up. Uh, he was born in Bethlehem but he did not stay in Bethlehem. His parents ended up moving to Nazareth, and that's where uh, he grew up, and he was known as a Nazarene. As you can see, Nazareth is in Galilee, in the region, a province that we would refer to as, you would refer to as, as Galilee. Uh, then number nine, I want you to locate Capernaum, and I'm going to circle it here on the map, Capernaum. And you see what I just circled in red there, Capernaum. You'll notice that Capernaum is right on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. And uh, you notice that especially uh, when you travel to Israel today and you visit Capernaum. And there's a beautiful uh, synagogue that's there in Capernaum. And uh, Capernaum is right on the shore, the northern shore of the Sea of, of Galilee. Capernaum is important because it was the headquarters of our Lord Jesus Christ's ministry. He grew up in Nazareth, but as he began his ministry, Capernaum became the headquarters for his ministry. And so you'll see references to Capernaum in the, in the New uh, Testament. So Capernaum, that would be uh, number nine in terms of the uh, 10 things that I would want you to know. And then uh, number 10, I'm going to circle down here. Number 10 would be uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And I want you to know where uh, Jerusalem is. And of course, Jerusalem would be the capital of Palestine or the capital of that area. Uh, Jerusalem would be the city uh, where Jesus would die. And so Jerusalem is central to a lot of the events and activities that took place during Jesus' uh, ministry. So those, those areas are the, the 10 that I want you to know as we work uh, towards, our, uh, towards our MAP project and as we work toward being ready for our, our final exam. So uh, let me then, let's, let's come out of that then, and let me, um, let me show you something else. Let me show you where some of those uh, different things occur in the, in the Bible, and just so you can see some of the names. So I'm going to share a screen with us here, and as you can see, as I share the screen, you're going to see uh, that I already have identified something that I wanted you to see, and that is in Mark 7, 26. You may remember that uh, one of the places on the map, in fact, you may want to be looking at your map uh, while, I, while, we look, while we look at some of these different first references. But Mark 7, 26 tells us about a Canaanite woman. She was definitely a Gentile. She was a Canaanite woman. Uh, the, pa the, the parallel passage in Matthew identifies her as, as a Canaanite. She was a Greek, as it says here, a Syrophoenician by nation. Syrophoenician. Um, you can see uh, in this name Syrophoenician, you can see the word Phoenicia 
which was one of the regions or provinces that we just uh, looked at on our map there uh, toward the toward the north. So Jesus actually traveled into the area where this lady was from and ends up meeting uh, with this uh, with this lady um, and and meeting her need. And it's a fascinating story. Uh, more of the story is told. I don't know if I can uh, easily go to this uh, reference here. It may not want me to because I'm searching for something else here. Uh, but let me see if I could go to Matthew 15 here. Um, doesn't want to make the shift here, but I thought I could maybe show you. Anyway, uh, but but Jesus uh, meets her need in a very uh, fascinating uh, story. Uh, let's see if I would be able to show you something else. Okay, do you remember Decapolis? Decapolis, I mentioned to you, Decapolis refers to 10, uh, 10 cities. Um, so Matthew 4, 25, there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea. And then it mentions and from beyond and from beyond Jordan. When you see this verse, what I want you to think of now as a result of our class and from our studies together, even what we just looked at just a minute ago, is that actually this verse is giving you different uh, regions or provinces. For, so for example, people are following him from number one, Galilee. That's a province or that's a region. Number two, from Decapolis. I'm gonna skip over Jerusalem because that's a city. Of course, that's a major city or a capital city. But then if I'm gonna, if I move on to the next one, number three, from Judea, that's a province uh, or a region. And then beyond Jordan, that actually is the Bible's term for what we have identified on the map as Perea. The other name for Perea was beyond Jordan. So when you see the word beyond Jordan used in this way, it, it's kind of a technical term. It's more than just saying people that were from beyond Jordan. It really is saying they were from beyond Jordan, this specific uh, area. So I'm going to put a number four there because this actually is another province or region um, uh, where people are, are coming from. But what I want you to see is that you can see references to Decapolis in various verses. And I'll just show you here. Uh, you can see Mark 5. Uh, if we go down uh, here, you can see Mark chapter 7 uh, and verse 31. Uh, you can see it mentions he departs from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. So you can see Jesus is, is traveling from place to place, almost from side to side as he's uh, in his ministry uh, um, travels. Uh, we already came across this a little bit, but let me just let me just do this search as well, just to show you here's this term beyond Jordan that occurs multiple times. And I'm just going to focus on the New Testament uh, references here. But you can see, here's the verse we looked at earlier. You can see here he comes into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. Um, you can see here beyond Jordan, beyond Jordan, uh, beyond Jordan. And again, this becomes almost a technical term. It, it was beyond Jordan, but it also is a technical term for this area that we come to know of as as uh, Perea. So if I could put that map back up again, and let me just, uh, having showed you a few of those things, uh, once again, just identifying, uh, for example, that uh, we have, um, we have, I'm trying to find my pointer here. So once again, here's Judea, and then here is Jerusalem. Okay, here's Phoenicia. Okay, when it mentioned Jesus traveling through the through the area of Tyre and and Sidon, I don't know if those are good colors for you to see, uh, but Tyre and Sidon, that's the area where where he uh, where he was, and then traveling um, through Galilee or however it worded it into the coast of the area of Decapolis. Okay, there's that Decapolis uh, area once again, Perea. This is the area beyond Jordan. 
Okay, why beyond Jordan? Well, this is the Jordan River. The Jordan River uh, flows between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. It actually begins above the Sea of Galilee, but then flows out the southern end of the Sea of Galilee and winds its way down. It actually is called the Descending River, Jordan, Jordan River, the river that descends because it just, the way it snakes down and uh, goes down, down, down into the into the Dead Sea or the Salt or the Salt Sea. But you can see the area of Perea is on the other side of the of the Jordan River, and so this Perea uh, was also referred to as beyond uh, beyond uh, Jordan. It was a uh, a Gentile a Jewish area, but on the other side of the Jordan River, <coughs> excuse me, kind of connected with with Judea. Um, so uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here related to this was, okay, think of Judea right here. Okay, think of Samaria right here. Think of Galilee right here. Uh, remember Jerusalem, let me clear this. Here. Remember Jerusalem is right here and Nazareth is right here. So let's say if somebody wanted to travel from Nazareth to Jerusalem, or for Jerusalem to Nazareth. What 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 route do you think they would take? Uh, typically, we say that the the shortest distance is a straight line between two points, right? So you would think that if you're traveling from Jerusalem to Nazareth, you would think that maybe you would just kind of travel like this, right? And that would get you uh, to Nazareth. Or if you were, let's say, you're traveling from 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 Cana. Uh, to Jerusalem, and you might, again, just do a straight line uh, like that. But if you look on the map, you'll notice something. Do you see You see how some of the arrows, and these are tracing um, some of the different um, travels uh, that were taking place during, during the time of Christ. But can you see that these arrows um, have us, actually, what they show is that one of the routes of travel to Galilee was actually not to go straight up through Samaria, but instead they would actually cross over the Jordan River and they would actually go up the other side of the Jordan River and then they would cross over into the sea of, into the area of, of, of Galilee. In other words, what I'm trying to suggest to us is that when the Jews would travel from Judea to Galilee or from Galilee to Judea, they would not necessarily travel uh, straight up from Judea and go all the way straight up and go like this. They would very often instead, they would take a little longer route where they would actually go over across the Jordan River, go up the other side, and then they would cross back over to the area of Galilee. Why do you think they did this? And the answer is what? The answer is they did this because of Samaria. The Jews did not like the Samaritans. The Jews did not like to travel uh, through Samaria. And uh, their attitude was reflected back. The Samaritans didn't like the Jews uh, either. So which, which brings up an interesting story. And let me again put up a Bible here and let's see if we can uh, if I can show you this in a in a Bible passage, but can you think of a story? Can you think of a story uh, a story from the life of Jesus? And I'm I'm having us look at John chapter four here, because look at John chapter four, and if we look at verse three, you'll notice here on verse three that it mentions that he left Judea. Can you picture where Judea is now? on the map right there in the middle. And he departed again into Galilee. Okay, Jesus did a lot of travel. Okay, so he's traveling on foot. So he's traveling from Judea and he's departing again into Samaria. And look what it says here. He must needs go through Samaria. What does that mean? He must needs go through Samaria. Samaria. Uh, must he needs go through Jamaria? Must he needs go through uh, Samaria? 
let's again look at our map here. Okay, so according to John chapter 4, Jesus is traveling. Uh, he's traveling from Judea, and he's traveling back uh, into Galilee. And what our map tells us, or what the Bible tells us, is that he must needs go through Samaria. Well, we saw uh, on our, uh, as we talked about it earlier, we saw that actually there was another way to go to, to Galilee, um, that they actually would cross over the Jordan River and would go up that area that's Perea, or sometimes identified as beyond Jordan. So when John chapter 4 says that Jesus must needs go through Samaria, it's not saying that geographically, is it? There was another way to go. But when it says that Jesus must needs go through Samaria, it's referring to something more than a geographical necessity. It's referring to a spiritual necessity. There was work for Jesus to do, and that's why he needed to go through Samaria. He chose to go through Samaria on that occasion in his travel between Judea and Galilee. He chose to go through Samaria. Why? Because he knew there was work for him to do. And sure enough, as he travels through Samaria, of course, this is where you can see in verse 7, here comes the woman of Samaria. And the woman of Samaria comes out, and of course, we know the story involving this woman and how the Lord met her spiritual needs. So Jesus' travel plans were impacted by what he knew the Lord wanted him to do. There was a way that most Jews would travel, and I'm sure that Jesus did that as well on occasion. But on this occasion, he knew there was work for God, work that his father had for him to do, in Samaria, and he chose, therefore, to travel through Samaria on his way to, to Galilee. So understanding the different regions can really help us in better picturing uh, some of the stories in the Bible and better understanding them, uh, even. Uh, there's something else I wanted to to mention, and this isn't doesn't relate as as much to the to the map. But as I was thinking about the lesson for uh, today, one of the things I thought of was as we get into the New Testament period, and even as you uh, did your reading uh, for today, you came across the name of this man, um, Herod. Uh, Herod the Great, as we refer to him. And when we come into the New Testament and we start seeing references to, to Herod, it can get a little bit confusing because uh, we have uh, people that uh, are referred to as uh, King Herod. Uh, we have a man that's referred to as Herod the uh, Tetrarch. Um, you have another King Herod, uh, and then you have another man who he's not referred to as Herod in the New Testament, uh, but he, in history, he would be one of the Herods, and this would be a man by the name of Agrippa or Agrippa the, the second. So um, let's just uh, take a, a few minutes, and let's just make sure we, we understand who these different Herods are and where they appear in, in uh, Scripture. So let's start off with the first of the Herods, and this would be the man that we know of as Herod the Great, okay, Herod the Great, or King Herod. This is the man, Herod the Great, this is the man who tried to kill Jesus by killing all the babies in, in Bethlehem. So, for example, if I were to go uh, back to our passage here, uh, to our Bible, and uh, I were to type in Herod, uh, for example, uh, let me kind of go backwards here. Uh, the first Herod mentioned in the Bible, this would be Herod, uh, Herod the Great. So you can see him here in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1, Herod uh, the king, this would be the man that we would refer to in history as 
Herod the Great. And this is the man who ruled as king from like 37 to 4 uh, BC. So he died about 4 BC. Jesus was born 5 to 4 uh, BC. You read about that in our chapter for, for today. So this is the man who, again, tried to put Jesus uh, to death. This is the man that we see mentioned uh, in Matthew chapter 2. You can see him there in Matthew chapter 2. You can see again in, uh, all through Matthew chapter 2. Every time Matthew 2 mentions this man, Herod, um, this is Herod uh, the Great. Uh, one exception, of course, he's not referred to as a Herod, but this man, Archelaus, this would be the son. This would be the son of, of Herod the Great. He would, in a sense, be another one of the Herods, uh, Herod Archelaus. Uh, but in Scripture, he is referred to as, as just Archelaus. But when we, if we keep moving in our biblical passages, and we come to Matthew chapter 14 and verse 1, notice here's a reference to Herod the Tetrarch. Okay, Herod the Tetrarch. Now, this is not in Matthew chapter 2 anymore. This is in Matthew chapter 14. Who is this Herod the Tetrarch? This is not Herod the Great. This is Herod Antipas. Herod Antipas. This is the Herod who uh, you can see, and I'll just kind of start scrolling through some of the uh, references here. Uh, you can see chapter 14 and verse 3 of Matthew. This is the Herod who had laid hold on John. This would be John the Baptist and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. Uh, so this is the Herod who put John the Baptist to death, Herod Antipas. Um, you can see this is a reference uh, to that Herod uh, right there. Um, Mark 6, 14, this is a different book in the New Testament. But again, this would be Herod, Herod Antipas, Mark chapter 6. Um, uh, moving to the references here, um, Luke chapter 1 is going to be back to Herod the Great because this is the time of Jesus, Jesus' birth. Um, but then Luke chapter 3, verse 1, you can see Herod being Tetrarch of Galilee. Okay, so this would be a reference again. This would be Herod uh, Antipas. Okay, so Luke chapter 1, the days of Herod, king of Judea, that's going to be Herod uh, the Great. Okay, the Herod, the Herod who was king when Jesus was born. But when we get to Luke chapter 3, Jesus has started his ministry and so at this point, King Herod the Great is dead, long dead, and now uh, Herod Antipas, and you can notice he's not referred to as king, he's referred to as Tetrarch of, of Galilee. He is a uh, Tetrarch. It's a different level of ruler than somebody who is given the title as, as king. So even in the Gospels, you have two different Herods, and it helps us to keep those uh, Herod's uh, straight. Now, let me scroll past uh, some of those Herod's, and let's go into the book of Acts. And when we get to chapter 12 of Acts and verse 1, it says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Well, who is this Herod? He's referred to as Herod the king. Does this mean he is Herod the great? Well, obviously no, right? Because Herod the great died in 4 BC, and we're talking about the church at this point. But this would, this would put us after the death of Jesus Christ, and the death of Jesus Christ took place, people usually say in AD 30 or AD 33, so obviously, this Herod the king cannot be the same as Herod the Great. Well, who is this then? Well, this is a Herod known as Herod Agrippa. Herod Agrippa the First. Herod Agrippa the First. 
And this is uh, a, a, a man, a Herod, a descendant of Herod, who reigned from 37 to 44 uh, AD. He died in AD 44. Uh, it's recorded in Acts chapter 12, kind of a gruesome way to die. Um, and even secular history records something very unusual about his death. Uh, but this was the short period during which he reigned as king, uh, just like his um, his forefather, Herod the Great, had reigned as king. But this is actually Herod Agrippa I that we have mentioned in Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, and then he, of course, is mentioned uh, again there, and you can see Acts 12. Acts 12, uh, verse 11, verse 19, verse 20, and so on. Verse 21, uh, it mentions uh, it mentions this uh, Herod. By the way, uh, here we have Acts 13, 1. Again, remember this Herod the Tetrarch, right? Who is Herod uh, the Tetrarch? Well, this again would be uh, Antipas. Okay, this is the man um, who was uh, uh, there at the trials of Jesus Christ, the time of his death. Uh, this is also the man who put John the Baptist uh, to death. But let me show you one other thing related to a Herod. This will not be quite as clear, but let me just uh, bring this up and, and mention it to us. Uh, this is a man that is referred to as King Agrippa. And this is in Acts 20, Acts 25. Uh, you can see King Agrippa, Agrippa, Agrippa. Uh, this is another one of the Herods. He's not referred to as Herod uh, in Scripture, but this would be, actually, this would be Herod Agrippa II. Okay, it was his father who's mentioned in Acts chapter 12, and that would be Agrippa I. But this is Agrippa uh, II. And Agrippa the the second is the is the the Agrippa the Herod, if I could put it that way. That's mentioned in Acts uh, twenty five and in Acts twenty six. This is the Herod who uh, who wanted to. Uh, you can see here who uh, Paul gave his def uh, defended himself. Remember, Paul was basically on on trial and um and so one of the people that he was testifying be, before remember this man festus and uh, he wanted uh, uh, input into paul's situation and so he asked this man king agrippa if he would be a part of of listening to paul and and weighing in on paul's on paul's case and so this is the uh, this is the Agrippa that is mentioned in Acts uh, 25 and even as far as Acts uh, 20, 26. So if we put all that together, then what, what do we have? Well, uh, we've got then a number of different Herods that are mentioned in, in Scripture. We have Herod the Great, uh, who was the king when the New Testament opens at the birth of Jesus. Uh, we have Herod uh, Antipas, who is referred to as the Tetrarch, and uh, he, uh, this is the, the man who was a ruler uh, during the time of Jesus' trial and death. He's the man who put John the Baptist to death. Uh, we have uh, a third Herod in uh, this man, Agrippa, Agrippa I. Uh, this is the man who's mentioned in Acts chapter 12. Uh, he's the man who um, put wanted to remember. He's the one that put Peter in prison. Was hoping to put Peter to death. He had already killed another one of the apostles, and was hoping to put Peter to death. Uh, but the Lord rescued Peter. But this is the Agrippa. This is the Herod Agrippa. He's mentioned. Um, he's referred to as Herod uh, the King in in uh, in Acts chapter twelve. And then we have another. Um, Herod Agrippa the second and uh, this is the uh, this is the Agrippa that we find in Acts 25 and uh, and 26. So as you're reading through 
the New Testament and you see a reference to these Herods, um, realize that these are not all referring to the same man. They are, in a sense, referring to the same family. They're referring to Herod the Great and the various descendants of his um, who reigned as who reigned as as kings, and so they were very they were they were a very a prominent ruling uh, family um, during uh, during the first uh, during the first century. And Herod Agrippa II is really the last of the of that family to to reign and. Uh, he reigned right up until the time of the Jewish rebellion uh, and about AD 66 or so that led to the destruction of the temple. And when he saw uh, when he saw how things were going to uh, were not going to go well uh, for the for the Jews for the and he was he was ruling over the Jews, but he was really on the Roman side. Uh, when he saw that, uh, he, um, he ended up um, going uh, to Rome, as I recall, and um, and and uh, went back and forth. Some actually took part in the Roman invasion of Palestine, but on the on the Roman side. But anyway, he's the last of the uh, Herod rulers uh, to to reign. So let me uh, let me close our time together by just making a few comments related to as we come into New Testament uh, times, uh, because there are some things that as we come into the New Testament we don't see in the old in the Old Testament. Uh, one of the things are references to Samaritans. We don't see hardly any references to Samaritans uh, in the Old Testament. You can see one passage there. Uh, that I referred to in, in the Old Testament, but but who are the Samaritans? Well, this again comes out of something that took place toward the end of the Old Testament period that led to these half Jew, half Gentile uh, uh, peoples. Um, we also see as we come into the New Testament, we see the rise of the synagogue. In the Old Testament, it was the temple. You worshiped at a temple. Well, well, where do the synagogues come come from? Well, uh, when the Jews went into exile into Babylon and other places, they still wanted to worship, but they didn't have a temple. So they uh, this led to the rise of synagogues, a place where they could gather together for worship. Uh, it was not a temple, but it was a place where they could gather together for worship that was referred to as a, a synagogue. Um, this man, Ezra, who was one of the last men in the Old Testament, uh, his study of his devotion to scripture and study of it uh, led or birthed a class of men known as scribes or lawyers. Uh, these lawyers, uh, not, these are not lawyers, maybe how we think of the word. These are people that were skilled in the law of God, uh, who devoted themselves to the study of God's law or the scripture. And we see references to these in the pages of our New uh, Testament. So as we think about the intertestamental times, there's a lot of things in that intertestamental period that affected our New Testament. Uh, even, for example, you can see here this idea of Persian rule in the Old Testament. The New Testament, you have Roman rule. Uh, well, that takes place during that intertestamental period, where you have all these different events that are uh, taking place and the rise of these other kingdoms. This shows you the four kingdoms of the men that followed Al Alexander the Great, and Alexander the Great divided his empire among these four uh, these four generals of his, and all these different events that are uh, taking place. Uh, and by the way, this you can even see on this screen here. You can see a reference here to uh, Herod the Great, who. Uh, marries in to this uh, into this dynasty. Let me see if I can uh, circle this here. Can you see that? That's kind of a uh, not a great color here, but that Herod the Great he married Mary Amni, who was a descendant of these Hasmoneans, who were these uh, Jewish uh, rulers. Okay, but all of this is is taking place during this intertestamental uh, period and leading to Roman rule and then Roman rulers. So that when you come into the New Testament, you 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 have Roman rule, um, and you have people like uh, Caesar Augustus, who's mentioned in the pages of our of our New Testament. 
um, he may have been the greatest emperor uh, ever. And you can see some of the details related to him uh, here, uh, Octavian or Caesar uh, Augustus. And then this man, Herod the Great, uh, who becomes a very significant ruler. Uh, we think of him as the man that tried to kill, kill the Christ child, and that's true, but a very significant ruler uh, coming from the area of, of, of this place, um, Marisha, where his family would have been from. And, and um, he would change the landscape of Palestine by the things that, that he would do. Here's a, a little bit of an overview of his life. Uh, but all the things that he did, the things that he built, um, his different sons uh, that are, are mentioned in the New Testament, even Archelaus uh, that I mentioned earlier, Philip, uh, who was also one of Herod's sons, and Herod Antipas, uh, who was his son, uh, the one who ruled uh, Galilee and beheaded John the Baptist. So this man, Herod the Great, again, had a very significant impact uh, in in new in the New Testament times, and in the the times related to the coming of Christ and the ministry of Christ, and and so on. So we may come back and say more about that uh, next time. But I wanted to at least mention those things as we looked at the map that we had for today. And uh, Lord willing, we'll pick up there. And uh, next time we'll meet. Be sure that you keep up with your assignments, your reading and doing the review question. So thank you very much. And, and Lord willing, we'll be back to having a live lecture uh, next time.